Hey everybody, it's Aiden here once again and welcome back to R Factor 2 as we're going to go a little bit more educational today uh, as opposed to going and doing some actual racing. Now today I want to look at setups, more specifically getting a basic setup done to help people like me or maybe even like you who don't have an inside out knowledge of every aspect of a racing car to start to get a car to behave somewhat how you would want it to and as a result start setting some quick lap times. So not only will this hopefully give you a, a little bit of basic knowledge but give you an insight into how I personally get acclimatized with a track and a car in a simulation. Now there are instances where I will know the car very well like the Lotus Renault uh, from RFT and R Factor 2 for instance or a certain circuit like Silverstone. Sometimes the car and track combination might not add up perfectly and you'll have to learn or relearn how to get around quickly. Now a setup for one test session or a race may differ from another due to temperature, humidity, air pressure, fuel levels, rain, the guy in front of you, dirty air, and so on and so forth. Now we've seen this uh, in Formula One in real life with the Mercedes team. Very good when they're out in front, but when they're a bit further back, they struggle because of the way the car is built and a lot of the time how the car is set up. Now to make this video, I've used two brilliant resources from Sim Racing that I will link in the description box for you. And they are the R Factor 2 Advanced Setup Guide by David O'Reilly, Kuba Brzezinski and Mishi Hoyer from Formula Sim Racing. And the Racer Alex Setup Guide that was originally written for EA Sports F1 2002 Challenge. The latter is a little more basic and better for more novice setup tweaks, while the former is very detailed, very useful and a very good nighttime read. So... Before we get into the nitty gritty of this video and start playing around with wings, brake pressures, anti-rollers and so on, I just want to get a couple of disclaimers out of the way. Number one, I am not the fastest, best or most knowledgeable driver out there. This is how I personally go about tuning a car and this helps me. It may help you, it may not. Number two, a setup isn't the be all and end all of fast lap times and I will not be sharing the setup used in this video. This reason being, in my estimations at least, in my own personal opinion, that a setup only accounts for about 30% of your lap time. The rest is down to the squidgy thing in the cockpit that's driving the car. Now, I'll admit I have gone on online and I've gone onto like these like race department websites and things like that and got setups for the Codemasters F1 games. And you'll see comments on the setup saying things like, oh, wow, excellent. Yeah, it works so well. I was like three seconds a lap quicker. Well, the next person will be going, nah, man, totally undrivable, innit? But to uh, to put this into another context, um, I'm a guitar player. I, I was actually a music teacher for a brief period, and I had people come up to me at gigs and the kids I was teaching when I've been playing the guitar and go, "How did you get the guitar to sound that good? What were your amp settings? What were your pedal settings?" And what sounds good in my hands will sound different to another player uh, because I hit my strings harder. I use a different plectrum. I use different string gauges. I do this. I do that. I do the other. The way. The, you know, where the amp was placed in the room and so on. So in other words, uh, having Michael Schumacher's exact setup or Slash's exact setup or John Mayer's exact setup will not make you Michael Schumacher or John Mayer. The concepts discussed will work the same though. Uh, so if you know softening the anti-roll bar will do this, it will happen in virtually any, any car. Number three, this is not gospel. Like I've said, this works for me and it may or may not work for you. And there is no such thing as the perfect setup for every track. However, once you get the car handling how you want it, you can then get your own setup uh, base to be different to the one that comes out of the box and then tweak that per track. So for instance, Hungary and Monaco will have similar setups, but Silverstone and Hockenheim will have different setups to Hungary, but be similar to each other, if that makes any sense. So in effect, get your base setup for your slow tracks, one for your medium and so on, and work with those. Once the initial hard work is done, you're not sorted for life, but you won't have anywhere near as much tweaking to do. So, with all that in mind, we're going to take a car to a track and see what we can do. And we're going to take this, the Formula Renault 3.5 to Imola, for this test. Now, I am quite familiar with Imola, uh, but I'm not very familiar with this version of Imola, because the versions of the tracks will differ from sim to sim and so on. Um, I believe this version of Imola is a port of the Assetto Corsa version, but I, I'm not actually 100% sure on that. Uh, so I'm, a, I'm familiar but not familiar with the track and I'm only a little bit familiar with this particular car. I've only raced it like once and I didn't really even touch the setup. So this is going to be something completely new. So we're going to acclimatize ourselves to the track over about three laps or so, bring the car in and see what we need to do. 
to uh, get ourselves to a more competitive level. So enough of me rambling. Let's get to Imola and I'll talk you through the basics of how we're going to get this car set up to do some decent lap times. Okay, so welcome to Imola and uh, I'll show you what I'm going to cover today. Uh, I'm not going to go into any of the really advanced stuff. We're just going to look at the basics. So let's go into general. We've got our gears and this basically means how long we're going to spend in each gear before we hit the rev limiter. Now, when I'm doing this, I like to go straight for sixth and then work my way back because I don't want to be hitting the rev limiter before the end of the longest straight, which will be the start finish straight here. Uh, we've also got DRS as well, and that's also at the fastest point of the track. So I want to make sure I've got enough leeway uh, as such to allow me to slipstream the guy from behind and not have my acceleration hampered by um, when I've not got my DRS open. Um, so yeah, it's it's all about compromise, uh, this, and it's a word I'm going to be using quite a lot. Uh, it's much like a relationship. Now, uh, the wings, the front and rear wing we've got here um, are on 28 and 57. I think 57 is the maximum. Yeah, 57 is the maximum. Uh, these provide the downforce for the car. So the higher the wing, the more aerodynamic drag you've got, which in turn produces downforce at the expense of top speed. Uh, turn it down and you've got the reverse effect. So tracks like Hungary, Monaco, you want it as high as you possibly get it for instance, you know, I'm probably exaggerating. And then at Monza, you want to turn it down quite a bit because you want the straight line speed. Next up, we're moving into the suspension settings. Uh, this is for our factor two, but it will work in any sim. Uh, we've got the anti-roll bars. Now, what the anti-roll bars do, uh, if you soften your anti-roll bars, you're going to get more grip at the expense of higher tire wear and less steering accuracy. Now, differences in your anti-roll bars are going to be more noticeable in slower corners. Now, here at Imola, that's going to be Toza, uh, which is just after the second chicane, and the two Rivazas, which are the final two corners before the start-finish straight. If the car is under understeering too much in faster corners, like at Silverstone, for instance, stiffen the anti-roll bars, which uh, you know is, is kind of counterintuitive, isn't it? Uh, and if you're understeering a little bit too much in slower corners, soften the anti-roll bars. I know, <laughs> it confused me the first time I read it, but hey, it works. Next up is the actual springs, uh, spring rate. Now, in this Formula Renault, we can't actually adjust the front suspension because they're detached, but we can adjust the rear suspension. Uh, a stiffer spring makes the car respond more quickly to driver input by the expense of actual grip. If the car doesn't react as immediately as you want, you want to soften your front end, but we can't do that. If the car is under steering into a concrete wall, soften the springs as well. But find the right balance. Most setups I find uh, in in sims, uh, I do tend to just jump straight for the suspension settings uh, and the wing settings. But yeah, that's to be expected in a sim. You can't just exactly jump in and expect to be matching Lewis Hamilton's lap time straight away. But from a personal perspective, I like a grippy initial turn in, so I'm going to run a soft front end to achieve that. And then I'll dial it back a bit if the uh, tire weight gets a bit too much. Next up is the ride height. And this is how high the car is off the ground in millimetres. And um, the lower the ride height, then the lower the car's centre of gravity will be. And if it's too low, the car will bottom out, which is um, going to happen probably more in single seats such as these. Uh, balance the ride height with packers to stop the car grounding or stiffen the springs. Uh, we're actually not going to go into packers today, however. And again, compromise. Um, you know, you, you want to try and find that right balance. Uh, touring cars, it's a bit harder to bottom out, so a lot of the time you will be able to run the car as low as you can. Uh, a V8 supercar, for instance, uh, an exception to the rule maybe. A Bathurst, if you're coming down through the forest elbow where it's very steep, very and with a very hard um, elevation change, then uh, you might want to raise it a bit to stop your front end splitter smacking off the tarmac and sending you into a wall. Now, lower ride heights will also increase grip due to the centre of gravity change and more air going over your rear diffuser at a higher speed due to being in a smaller space. So imagine turning the tap on and sticking your finger over it. All that pressure going through a small gap is going to shoot the water at high speed in uh, one direction. We're also going to look at camber, which is here. Now, negative camber, which is basically the top of the wheel pointing inwards towards the car, 
means that when you're mid-corner the tyre is flatter on the road and a greater area of the tyre is working. So when you're going through a corner your tyres are working when you need them in the corner. Uh, the downside is that greater camber means less effective straight line performance and acceleration so you want your rear camber to be as flat with the floor as you possibly get it without compromising your, your cornering grip. And then we're going to move finally into the uh, brake pedal force. Now the brake pedal force, well, that, that's all down to taste. Uh, personally, I like to set it so that I'm just about to lock up as I'm going into a corner. and Because you cadence braking, so you're braking hard initially. And then coming off as the downforce wears off to uh, prevent the front tyres from locking up. And brake balance, well, it's just how, how much uh, your brake balances forward or back. Uh, further forward it is the sooner your fronts will lock up over the rears and sending it the other way has the reverse effect of course. Now uh, we've got the track is green right now so there's no rubber on it. Other cars are going out and we'll get to those in a, in a minute. And we're going to go out, we're going to go a little bit slowly so we can identify bumps and we're going to set the car. We're going to see how the curbs are, we're going to see this, that and the other. And we're going to see at what points the car is going to uh, present us with a little bit of a challenge so and if it helps uh, for you I, I don't personally do this but you know get a map of the track and write notes on it does the back end kick out is the car sliding at the front am I locking my brakes and so on and so forth because we haven't got anti-lock brakes we haven't got traction control um, we've got the other cars on track um, and I find it best when I'm learning a track to put some other AI cars on and then set their ability level to be one to three percent higher than where I'd normally have them and then play follow the leader so then I can go right where's he breaking where should I break am I going to ram him up the arse if I break too late here how much am I going to be affected by the dirty air shall I set up for dirty air am I going to be running in front of these guys and so on where's a good overtaking spot practice the overtaking and things like that practice the, the late breaking so it all helps and um, yeah, so without further ado, um, I think we better get on track as we've been talking for a very, very long time. We're just going to go out, default setup, and see what happens to the car. We'll try and get a time lap in, but if the car's going to start spinning out in several corners, then we'll come back in. But um, I, I do want to get a time on the board. Not a very long pit lane exit here at Emila. Oh, so we're going to need to turn the turn the uh, brake pedal pressure down. A bit twitchy coming into the Villeneuve chicane. I want to hit those curves, but I'm scared that the car's just going to. Absolutely go mental. I felt a bit of a twitch coming through there. I wasn't nowhere near as quick through Tozer as I wanted to be. Piratella. Again, not as fast as I wanted to be. Agua Minerale. Bit of a squirrely moment under break. <coughs> Excuse me. I can attack that curb on the way out. That's fine because we're going in a straight line. <coughs> I'm barely using uh, full braking force. <laughs> Definitely need to soften the suspension to get over those curbs. <laughs> These are the Revatsas coming up. Oh, yep, yeah, that's locked. DRS. See where that leaves us. Tyres are struggling to warm up. Are we going to hit the rev limiter? Yes, we are. Yep. I think second gear needs to be a little bit longer. Deploy DRS up here. Bit of understeer into Villeneuve. So the exit curb there is usable. Oh, lock the brakes again. Twitchy coming out of Tozer again. <laughs> I 
That didn't go too well. So we're a second off Carlos Sainz Jr.'s time. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's flat spotted the tyres, isn't it? Bump there, that's going to be a bit of a problem. So we're point three six two slower than Carlos Sainz. Yeah, definitely can't use that curb. Right, let's get back into the pit lane. And we can use this video as well as uh, maybe we locked up but didn't realise it, especially with the different fields of view that people... Let's say we locked up there. So, I'm going to bring this back. I'm going to bring it back to about 72%. Uh, camber, I'm going to leave the same. So we want to try and solve our locking problems first. That's what I'm looking at. Front and rear wing, there's no point in adjusting those because, well, the, front, the rear wing is maxed. But I'm going to lengthen each of these gears by one click. Uh, but, 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 but. Yeah, we'll leave it there for now. But we'll save this as Imola Base. So this will be the setup that we work from from now on. And every time we save the setup, we will save it as a new name. Uh, so if we do need to go back, we can. Instead of having to go back to the default setup and uh, remember what things we used. Or you could just write it down. <laughs> Again, whichever you prefer. Still a bit of understeer. So the anti roll bars might need a, a bit of a tweak this time round. And I haven't touched the wings yet. The wings are my fine tuners. If that makes any sense. I find bigger gains from adjusting suspension and camber and all that stuff than I do from adjusting the wings. That didn't go particularly well, did it? Let's let this guy through. Well, here comes Sainz. Let's play follow the leader. I don't know why he's trying to defend from me. I wonder what happened to Carl what ever happened to Carlos Sainz? See how we're handling in the dirty air and the slipstream. Sorry. <laughs> I've actually taken. No, I haven't. Okay. I thought I'd actually taken the uh, front end off. Keeping up with him, though, that's the main thing. So he's the fastest guy on track right now. So we've gone three tenths quicker by changing the setup. Or three tenths quicker than our personal best, at least. Ah, Carlos. 
Damn you. Damn you, sir. <laughs> but at least we know we can follow uh, follow him. Um, so we were still a bit twitchy coming through Toza. So, oh, ride height. How low does this go? 18 mil. Well, I'm going to set that to 24 mil. Actually, we'll set it to 20, 27 mil. Let's see what happens here. Uh, right, we're now 7th. Half a second off. So we've got half a second to find from somewhere. So we're going to save that. And we're going to save that as Imola Update 1. And see where that takes us. Trial and error. But if you really know the car... Oop. Hiccuped. just in the ride height. That's given me so much more grit going through Toza there. I hope you, I hope you can see on the video that this is helping rather than uh, just taking my word for it. Um... It's like I say, you know, adapt your setup to your driving style. I like, you know, I like to think my driving style is like that of Jensen Button. Yours might be like Alonso's or Verstappen's or something like that. It's that guy locks up. So yeah, the twitchiness has definitely gone. There's still a bit of understeer, but... See what kind of a lap we can do. Look at that, we've now gone up one and a half seconds faster than my personal best. Oh, you bastard. Three tenths quicker, but we're being held up, so... Well, the dive bomb worked anyway. <laughs> right, let's try again, shall we? Marlon Stockinger's now gone fastest. We're now a tenth off Stockinger. the rears, we lock the rears, we lock the rears, and we're in the wall. Never mind. Let's try this one more time then, shall we? Got Imola update one loaded. Let's try again. We'll pretend that never happened, but at least we've got some heat in the rear tyres. I 
if that's the case, we'll just shift that forward a tiny bit. I mean, the curves are abusable in some fashion, but don't expect to absolutely hammer them. So much better through there, he says, as, it, as the car just goes completely wide. Car is so much more drivable now. You can drive straight across that curve, no problem. So, like I say, the Difficulty is set higher than where I'd normally be. Uh, difficulty is currently on 107%. Which is pretty high for me. DRS just turned itself off again. Take a different line to everybody else down the start finish straight. Bit of understeer. So there's still a little bit left to do. Maybe some more front end required. Still faster than the car lost sights in sector one. Slower than our personal best, though. And we're going to go slower than our personal best again. Balls. <laughs> but if you first you don't succeed, try, try again. I'm being way too aggressive now. But that's the confidence that the, the setup is giving me to try and push that a little bit quicker through that middle section. Definitely through here, it is so much better. I, I just overestimated the setup. I think that's what happened there. But I can consistently put the car where I want it. Take any advantage you can. That was going to happen at some point. So our current best is a 
We're half a second up nearly on uh, Carlos Sainz now. Bit of a wiggle through there. Really closing in on this gaggle in front. Cadence breaking through the Barrichello chicane. What is this called? We're one and a half seconds up on our best. The second of that's a bit of a squiggle. DRS. One minute 32. <laughs> so that is the wonders of a setup. Um, obviously it will get you a starting point, but the, the remainder of it is down to you, the driver. Uh, that is personally how I go about setting a car up. Uh, it's kind of a accelerated process. I would have done probably about five laps or so on a default setup. Tweaked it, done another five laps, tweaked it, done another five laps, tweaked it. And sometimes, as you've seen, uh, a setup can give you too much confidence in your own abilities. That's why I've, I've spun it out twice uh, before setting that best lap. Um, the track rubbering in may have had something to do with it, but I definitely felt the car being much better having tweaked it. So, I uh, hope this has helped you. Um, if you have any comments to leave, please leave them below. Maybe I've just chatted absolute bollocks for the last God knows how long. Um, but, uh, but yeah, uh, until next time... I've been Aidan Moord. Have a great day wherever you live in the world. And I'll see you again very, very soon. So until then, goodbye. What are these three doing? I think I just lost all the heat in my tyres. <laughs> Catch you next time, guys. Bye. If I bleed tonight.